the term jazz and how do you use that term and what does it mean to you? You know, is it, is it, um, you know, obviously some people f really see this term as, is something that can, is kind of like an open door. It's available to everybody. It's for everybody. It's by everybody. But other people make, you know, can have made a very compelling case that it, it maybe isn't for everybody or that it, it only certain people should make jazz or only certain kinds of things are jazz. Um, I don't necessarily agree with those arguments, but, you know, they have been made by some very smart people um, who are very trying to be very thoughtful or are being very thoughtful. I mean, what's your what's your take on that? Has it changed over time? I think part of the reason that uh, jazz or black American music uh, appeals to to people throughout this planet is because it comes from a place of, of uh, pain uh, and joy. Uh, it's it's really a reflection of the most sort of visceral human emotions. Um, I never ever forget where this music comes from, um, why it exists, and also the spirit of it is that it uh, it allows for human beings to be themselves. It's a it's an emotional outlet. That's what the blues is like. You got to let it out somehow. Um, I. I, I was on a tour that went through South Africa and I went to the Apartheid Museum in Johannesburg and that was a very uh, impactful experience for me. I, uh, if, I mean, if we ever travel again and you're in Johannesburg, go to the Apartheid Museum. It is hands down the best museum I have ever been to in my life. I, I, I think there's going to be like a museum theme here. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I learned a lot about Nelson Mandela afterwards, and, and his ideals were, rather than separate people, bring them together. Let's unite. Uh, we, are, we are better as a society when we are together. Um, and that, that's the approach that I take in, in life for everything, including music. Uh, you know, I'm Cuban. There are plenty of people that play Cuban music uh, whichever way they do, and it really doesn't bother me. Uh, I don't, I don't feel very protective about it. Um, there are plenty of people that are keeping the tradition alive in a, in a strict, strict sense. Um, and honestly, I don't know. I, it's, things evolve, things change. Um, as much as I like riding horses, uh, if somebody were to tell me stop uh, getting in these cars, you now have to ride a horse everywhere you go. I feel like, okay, that's absurd. <laughs> that's ridiculous. I feel like there's a, a better option here. We can, we can be imaginative and um, consider our reality of the tools that we have with music the, uh, and just in life in general, and let's see how we can make this work. Let, let's see how we can be more sustainable um, there's got to be a better way than just ignoring the present, you know? Yeah. I mean, to stay, to stay on this, um, on this topic a little bit, you know, I, I'm very interested in music education and jazz education at, you know, particularly at the higher education level, like at the higher ed level. And, um, you know, you're somebody who is really, it's really an interesting kind of, um, uh, an interesting kind of example because you are in some ways a product i think it could be argued that you're a product of like music school like conservatory or music school kind of thing but you're also a product of like this quote unquote like the 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 school of the road and um you did have you know i think multiple kind of like formative professional experiences like while like kind of coinciding or on a parallel track of, of like a, an education thing for you, a kind of like more standardized education. I mean, how do you see all this shaking out? What do you think, like, how did that all work for you personally? And how do you see, how do you see kind of like this, this thing working? I mean, to me, the, the jazz education at the higher, at the higher levels in particular is like, 
is still kind of at this like experimental level. Like I, I don't know that it really has like a hundred percent proven that it kind of does what it says it's doing or, um, you know, or even is done in the right way, all of that kind of stuff. And, but at the same time, there's just not, unless you're a rhythm section player and, and is kind of like peaking at a very young age, you might not get an opportunity to learn this stuff on, on the road. The, and I, I will wrap with this question soon, I'm sure. But, but the, you know, the other part of it is like, I, when I think about some of your earlier experiences playing professionally, if, particularly like when I knew you, I imagine that that was a very high stress situation in terms of like learning how to do that or like starting to do that. And, and compared to like maybe what we think of as like, oh, you're going to go out with the bassy band, you're playing every night and you're playing like six hours a night. Everyone's like, you know, people are dancing and all that kind of stuff. There's not this kind of like microscope on you. Like you're playing, you know, a couple sets a week maybe. And, you know, there is kind of like a, 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 a microscope on you. So I guess, you know, you can kind of take that question, if it is a question, kind of where you will, but like, what was your personal experience and and where do you think we go from here, education-wise? Well, I like spaghetti. Sometimes I put tomato sauce in. No, I'm just <laughs> maybe, um, maybe don't take it quite wherever you want, but you know, like, okay. it's your time. This is your time. I, I think a lot of uh, the responsibility is actually on the quote unquote students. Um, I feel like uh, in the U.S. Th there's a lot of hand holding um, in in college, and I don't even know if I'll feel like this tomorrow. But that, this is how I feel today. So whatever. Um, I don't know. There's this uh, sense in the U.S. that the student is becoming more a customer rather than uh, a pupil. And that that is strange to me. Um, I feel like teacher, you know, I, I feel it's necessary to, for there to be accountability, especially for bad teachers, uh, racist teachers, misogynist teachers. All, like, yeah, that needs to to be called out, and that needs to change. Um, but but we also have to be able to be honest with students and tell them what you're doing is is uh is in my opinion not good enough uh if if you want to if if you want to have a career in this um and and you need to do these things in my opinion to improve and and th as a teacher I'm telling you this is what you have to do I feel like in some institutions now you can't really do that um out of a f out of a fear of being perceived as insensitive to the student's emotional well-being. And I, I mean, I don't think I'm a, I, f I feel I'm pretty harmless. Uh, but I, I think it's important that we, we can be candid with the students and, and be direct about what we feel they need to improve on. Um, as far as the difference between a schooling of uh, academia and on the road, they're two very different things. Um, Yes, it was a very stressful uh, time for me, but I will say that in hindsight, I realized that it had nothing to do with music. I, um, the older I've gotten, I've realized how important it is uh, to have your mental health, like you have to have your pulse on your mental health, especially if you're a musician or an artist. Um, there's this great book that I read called The Body Keeps the Score. It's by a Dutch psychiatrist. And man, I wish I would have read it uh, a long time ago. I just feel like you really have to know yourself or at least begin on that journey of just endless questions about who am I? What am I doing? How do I feel about these things? Uh, am I conscious of, of the things that I'm doing or are they just kind of muscle memory uh, how did my childhood impact the way that I conduct myself now? All these things uh, matter not just for you as a human being, but it has a huge impact on, on the type of music that you play uh, and how you perform uh, as a musician. Um, the, the, the courage 
or lack thereof that you have as a composer or an improviser, all of that has very little to do with music and a lot to do with who you are as a person. Um, and yeah, I, I, just, I would encourage people to just let go of whatever stigmas we have about mental health and just embrace learning about yourself. It's, it's, it's not going to make things worse. It'll make things better. It, it might make them harder, uh, but in the long run, it makes them, it makes them better. Um, yeah. So I, and I, so to answer your question, I, I feel like either being on the road or being at school, neither one of those are going to yield, uh, positive results if if you're not I don't want to say at peace with yourself but if you're not in touch with 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 who you are what you're about it's very easy at a young age to compare yourself to other people uh even to idolize older musicians that quite frankly are horrible uh role models <laughs> in my some of the some of the older musicians um so yeah I I all my students, I just encourage them to just know yourself, like really spend some time just getting to know who you are and what you want to do, what you're about, all those things. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I, I've, I've been very um, influenced and inspired by this, uh, this book by Carl Rogers, who's um, kind of like the father of the humanistic uh, sort of like um, therapy and, you know, he talks about having, you know, basically the process of getting your getting to know yourself is is kind of like what what therapy basically is, you know, just kind of like understanding yourself and and a therapist can help you, you know, kind of go through that process. I think if, if in the best case scenario and I, I, I do think that like a, in some ways, like a really great private instructor can do that in a musical way, you know, not necessarily like yeah. they're not, they're not there to give you kind of emotional therapy. And most of them are yeah. pretty bad at that. Even the ones that kind of pretend to be good at it or want to do it. But, um, yeah. but you know, in a, in a musical way, it, it's so interesting to me how like those two things can be separate, but they can be the same thing. You know, this kind of like the personal emotional thing and you know, the, who you are and then the music, because the music is always going to be, um, it's like both a reflection of that, but then also it, it's kind of also maybe the core of that too. Like sometimes you get to the deepest, yeah, the deepest parts of you. So I, I think that's really, I think that's really great advice. Well, I'll definitely make sure that we have links to that, that book and all that kind of stuff in the comments if people want to check it out. Yeah. Um,